Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here in S3. And we are wrapping up our discussion on World Allergy Week with Professor Heather Zarr, a pediatric pulmonologist, and Professor Mike Levine, CEO of the Allergy Foundation of South Africa. And, of course, we have to traverse some of the most common chronic diseases in the humans. I mean, there are allergic airway diseases of the respiratory system, and asthma affects over 350 million people worldwide. And allergic rhinitis affects between 10% and 50% of the population, depending on geographic location basically what we're saying is it's going to affect us but how do we mitigate some of those effects and how do we understand it a bit better this is why we got the pros in just for you um perhaps uh, props i i'm thinking maybe there's something we can find that's wrong with the coast okay just maybe it doesn't have a higher <laughs> pollen count because i know like down here in Cape Town, we've got the best sun for solar we've got yep. the freshest air for yes. breathing um does it make a difference in terms of geographically within south africa where you are is the high felt worse i always felt like the high felt was worse um, <laughs> i feel that what, too what are those hot spots bless you, bless you. <laughs> So, absolutely, what you're allergic to is dictated by where you live. Ah, and in the, in the coastal areas, we've got uh, much more humidity, so we've got house dust mites as one of the big problems. Anywhere near the coast has got seaweed. There's a specific species of mold that grows particularly in seaweed that is quite allergenic. Um, and then it differs according to where you are. So if you're living in the winelands, if you're living in a place where there are lots of uh, fields around, there might be mice. Uh, horses, uh, and then in the high felt, uh, although you might think that uh, there's less of those kind of allergens around that like humid areas, a lot of people have got thatched roofs on their lapas, and that's where, you know, you can also have mold growing. So uh, the trees are different, the pollens are different, but the house dust mite is really one of the most uh, powerful allergens, and that's the house predominantly dust in the coast. What does that result in, in terms of its reaction? Is that an asthma-related trigger? What, what is the, the dust mite doing? All of <laughs> these are aeroallergens. So these are things that you breathe in that can cause either allergic rhinitis or asthma the as the major respiratory conditions that you get from allergies. All right. Yes. I, I would add that in asthma, it's usually not one single thing. For oh, sure. Trigger. And in children, it's very, very often the virus, the virus that we've heard about that is yeah. around, yeah. you know. Um, and those are the major triggers. And a lot of children, in fact, with asthma in, in our communities do not have allergies that you can demonstrate, although those that are more severe um, do have. But, but, but it's really a whole lot of things in the environment that, that, that a person may be exposed to that often um, you know, is, is revving up this inflammation in airways. Um, I'm going to ask you very quickly before we wrap up here, um, advice for someone who's caught in it right now, especially when it comes to kids. If you, and I speak from a parent's perspective here. If yeah. you've got a child that is entering into that phase where allergies are becoming a thing, where do we begin when trying to treat allergies, particularly in your focal area when it comes to the lungs and the rhinitis? So I would say for parents, the most important thing to do is get yourself well informed. Okay. And the best place to do that is to go to the Allergy Foundation website, allergyfoundation.co.za. There are huge amounts of information brochures about how to control your rhinitis, how to use your nasal sprays, how to use your sinus rinses effectively. Uh, in terms of asthma, we focus on some key messages which are regular controller therapy taken every day okay. to prevent you from having symptoms rather than waiting until the symptoms occur and putting trying a band over it. the problem and trying to just deal it too late. And then finally, you know, get your medication to where it's supposed to work. So use oh, yeah. a spacer, get that medication into the lungs. There are so many people yeah. who are using asthma pumps, who are using them inefficiently. They may as well be throwing just them away. The they may as well be spraying them into the air. Um, all children and any adult who's got difficult to control asthma, who's on a medium to higher dose of therapy, can benefit from using a spacer in order to get the delivery of the medication to the lungs and avoid the side effects from having it in the throat where it shouldn't be. So I think those are some of the key messages around good care for allergies and asthma. Thank you for the work you are doing wow. on that baseline. We absolutely love you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, professors. Mike Levine and Heather Zahn. And, of course, we'll be delving into all sorts of other aspects of allergies in the next couple of minutes. But for now, let's focus on footy. Yeah, we're going from current professors to potentially future professors, if you know what I mean. Yeah, we're talking about children. And they're definitely...